to take a quick look at this Saracenia flava. It's um, just the end of July, we're heading into August, so we're very solidly into summer here. It's 90 degrees today. And Saracenia flava, it's a springtime species. Some of the other ones like Leucophylla and the Rubra subspecies are putting up great pictures right now, or about to. Saracenia flava doesn't really do that. It sends up all of its pictures in the spring, maybe sometimes a few in the summertime, but basically at this point on this plant, what you see is what you get. And there's an awful lot to see here. This was actually my third Saracenia ever that I got from California carnivores for $8 when it was three inches high, practically the same price we sell them for now. Um, and that was 30 years ago. And being a, a little kid, now grown up and a big little kid, I never wanted to divide it because I wanted to see what how big I could get it. So this is actually over 30 years of growth. Anyways, I digress. So back to what to expect about having a big, beautiful flava or even a small one, frankly. Lots of people want their plant to look perfect. I want my plants to look perfect too, but we also have to, um, you know, live within the real confines of of these plants life cycles and seasonality and so this plant was absolutely glowing in the springtime and that's one of my favorite colors is that fresh saracenia flava glowing yellow green color it's so beautiful it's still beautiful now but you can see there's some nectar burn which are these red spots what that's caused by is a droplet of nectar since they do make so much nectar magnifying the sun and creating a little red or a brown spot. And that's okay. Another thing that you might notice is a kind of like a sootiness to this. There's a black sootiness around the top and even a little bit in the throat. That's just sooty mold feeding on all that extra nectar. And it's not hurting the plant. And it is a little bit unsightly, but again, that's just the reality of these beautiful plants. That's how they look. Um, another thing to take a look at is uh, some of this actual browning like on this picture here. Here's two things that are great. I love this one because this shows two things. Number one is this soft brown patch. That is because it ate so many bugs. And although we're growing these things because they're beautiful, these plants are on their own mission, which is to catch a whole bunch of bugs, to get a whole bunch of fertilizer, to get bigger and make flowers, make seeds. And although we don't love the look of that, it's actually helping the plant hugely. I can kind of pull the lid back and you can see all the bugs inside, probably, maybe. That black patch anyways is all the bugs. And so it literally goes up to there. As it's breaking down, it isn't uncommon for sometimes some of that tissue to break down too, because there's just a lot of digestion and breaking down happening there. The other thing to look at here is this crispy lid. Now, we're all trying our best with our plants to water them perfectly all the time, but if you miss a watering, you might get some crispy lids. And even if you don't, you might get some crispy lids. Like this time of year, it's totally natural to have some browning from the top down on the earliest of spring pitchers. They're, they've done their thing, they've caught bugs and they're cycling through. If they're bothering you and you're a super persnickety plant pal, you can totally cut this away. I wouldn't recommend cutting all this away because this is feeding your plant, but you could cut the top off just to lose the crispiness. And don't worry about the crispiness. I mean, we always get a, I get a sickening, you know, feeling in my solar plexus when I find it. But the truth is, this plant has had crispy pitchers numerous times over the decades that I've been growing it. I can't remember a specific time, but I can almost guarantee there was some moment when I was a teenager and this whole thing got zonked and got all the pitchers dried up all the way halfway down and it would still totally come back. It might not come back this year. You might have to wait a little bit but it will still totally come back. And these are all just normal, natural things that happen when growing these amazing plants. Um, I don't think there's anything else I wanna talk about that, but I hope this helps you understand exactly what you're looking at. So when you're looking at your plants, you're not freaking out. Just calm, be calm and relax and enjoy the beautiful way that they look. And again, you can always trim away anything that you find unsightly.